Thank you so much for that report, Gal. And joining us now for more on this situation is the president of the Zionist Organization of America, Morton Klein. Morton, thank you so much for being here with us today and for setting the record straight on some of this. Morton, you say that the attacks from the terror group Hamas are based on a lie. Hamas claims that Israel is cleansing Israel of Arabs through illegal evictions. But um, that's not accurate in my experience, but I want you to explain the intricacies for our viewers. That allegation is, of course, ridiculous. Jews have owned these homes since the mid-1800s. In 1948, when Jordan captured this part of Jerusalem, they threw all the Jews out. And in 67, in the defensive war, when Israel recaptured these Jewish homes in this Jewish area of Jerusalem, uh, they allowed uh, the Jews to reclaim ownership of these homes. The, all the Jews asked were that these Arabs pay rent. For years and years, they refused to pay rent. <clears throat> it's been a court battle for years. Finally, the court said, if they don't pay rent, you can evict them. We're talking about 40 or 50 people. If they would pay rent, they wouldn't be evicted. This is a, a real estate issue that would turn out the same in any country in the world. You don't pay rent, you get evicted. <laughs> the, the genocide, it's, it's absurd. There were 150,000 Arabs in this area in 1948. Today, there are 2 million. Whoever's in charge of the genocide program has to be fired. It's not working. It's, it's absolute nonsense. Uh, this was just an excuse that Hamas used to attack Israel. Their charter, people don't know this, Article 7 and 12 of the Hamas Charter calls for the destruction of Israel and to murder every Jew on earth. This is a Nazi charter. And what's horrifying, uh, unlike what the gentleman said before, the Arabs of Gaza voted for Hamas. They know that Hamas is a, is a terrorist Nazi regime, and they voted for him. And the reason there wasn't an election a week or two ago uh, that Abbas said he was going to have is because the polls showed that the Arabs, again, were going to vote for Hamas. So the Palestinian Arabs in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, and in Gaza support this Arab Nazi regime, uh, Hamas. And what's worse, what's worse is that for the first time ever, Israeli Arabs are attacking Jews in Israel. Israeli Arab citizens are attacking Jews in Israel. They're wow. burning down synagogues. They're burning down Jewish homes. They're destroying Jewish cars. They're burning down Jewish apartment buildings. It is frightening. Jews are now saying, are these Israeli Arab citizens disloyal to the state of Israel? Or they're attacking uh, Jews in the streets? That's what's happening. It's hardly reported. And the members of the Knesset that are Israeli Arabs, none of them have condemned this in any significant way since this has been going on. It's really a frightening situation. I, I didn't realize that. I knew that there was, was always a security issue. I remember, and I try to say on this show as often as I can, my own experience being there as a journalist, uh, Morton, I saw hospitals where Israeli charities took care of Arab uh, people who were, you know, t on the other side fighting against them, but then the Arabs would, uh, I'm sorry, then the Israeli soldiers would rescue them and bring them over, even though the, the Arab national regime were firing on this hospital. It had literally incoming mortar, um, and, and they would still take care of them and their families. Um, I saw that the Israeli neighborhoods had security around them and that the Arab houses did not have security, which only tells me that it wasn't needed. Um, and so things like that that I noticed just as a journalist traveling in Israel spelled things out for me that I don't get from American or international media. So the sort of things that you're saying to me make sense. The sort of things I'm seeing in American and international media don't add up. This moral equivalency that we continue to hear over and over thrust in our face that there are two sides and it's as if Israel is the attacker uh, in this entire thing is just not the case. And I know it's not the case. Um, there's a big difference between what and who each side is targeting. Hamas seeks to kill as many innocents as possible. As you said, they are a terrorist organization, but we're not hearing that from our White House, and we're not hearing that from the media. Explain why. <laughs> First of all, President Biden, my president, I'm an American citizen, and this administration 
has helped enable, encouraged, and empowered, uh, and emboldened Hamas and the Palestinian Authority to attack Jews. How have they done this? <laughs> President Trump stopped giving any U.S. taxpayers money to the Palestinian Authority because the Palestinian Arabs and the Palestinian Authority refused to negotiate, and they pay Arabs to murder Jews. Can you imagine that? Any Arab who murders a Jew gets a lifetime pension, and the more Jews they murder, the larger the lifetime pension. So Trump said no more money. President Biden last week said we're going to give the Palestinian Authority $300 million. <laughs> uh, they also said we're going to join the United Nations Human Rights Commission, which is a viciously anti-Israel uh, commission. <laughs> and they said we want to go back in, in the Iran deal. Iran is the leading funder and sponsor of terrorism on Earth. They sponsor and fund Hamas. They provide the missiles and rockets to Hamas. And Biden now wants to go back to a deal with Iran. The Arabs see this and they say America is really with us. So Biden deserves some blame uh, for this. And he should immediately cut all aid to the Palestinian Authority. It's a terrorist regime. And stop negotiating, attempting to negotiate, again, negotiate with, with Iran, this terrorist regime. <laughs> um, also, it's important to note, this war of the Arab war against Israel is not about land. It's not about statehood. The Palestinian Authority... And the Palestinian Arabs were offered a state in 1948 and 2000 and 2008. They rejected it every single time because accepting a state would mean accepting Israel as a Jewish state. And the Palestinian Arabs do not want this. So they could have had a state many, many times, but the issue is not statehood. It is Israel's destruction. That's why nothing yeah. works. That's why they refuse uh, uh, to negotiate. And Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority, he is helping incite the violence that we see from the, from the uh, Hamas. He is claiming the Jews want to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. He's saying increase the, the, the uh, confrontation. He's saying aim your bullets at their targets, make sure you hit them. These are words from Mahmoud Abbas. The media does not cover this. The media is siding with the Nazi regime of the Hamas uh, terrorists. I call it a Nazi regime again because their uh, charter calls for the murder of every Jew. What is more Nazi-like than that? Uh, and it is, uh, thank God, there are many countries in the world, from Germany to France to Denmark, who are supporting Israel, saying they have an obligation to defend themselves and fight these uh, Arab terrorists uh, from Gaza and from Judea and Samaria. Everything you're telling me um, doesn't sound like a ceasefire is going to happen anytime soon. What, what are your thoughts on that? And is it a good idea? Or would you like to see this conflict carried out to its end so that um, this can be rectified once and for all, because this is such a perpetual ongoing problem. First, we should understand if Hamas had not launched rockets against major civilian areas of Israel, Israel would not be responding with rockets to try and stop them. Israel has been launching attacks on Hamas in Gaza to try and stop them from continuing these rocket la uh, launches against Israel. They haven't stopped. Today, Hamas has launched hundreds of more rocket attacks against innocent Israelis. Uh, many have been killed. By the way, the numbers that have been killed uh, uh, in the Gaza Arabs, you cannot trust those numbers. It is Hamas that gives people and the news media these numbers. I don't think you can trust Hamas's numbers, so I'm sure the number is actually far, far less. <laughs> right, and, and, and but what are the chances of a ceasefire? <laughs> <laughs> if Gaza, if Hamas Arabs would say we want to cease fire, we're going to stop uh, uh, firing at Israel, uh, President Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said if there's a ceasefire for three hours, they'll work toward a ceasefire. Hamas said no, no deal. They want to keep uh, uh, sending rockets into Israel. So right now, there's no chance of a ceasefire, at least for several more days because Hamas refuses to stop launching rockets. And Israel also feels, as long as they're doing rocket, Israel, rockets, they want to destroy all the rocket launchers and all the areas where their missiles are being stored and all the tunnels uh, that they've dug underneath to allow uh, Hamas terrorists to come into Israel to murder Jews. So uh, I think it's going to be at least a day or two or maybe much longer. Uh, it's up to Hamas. If Hamas would surrender and say no more rockets, Israel would stop. Hamas doesn't want to stop as of, as of this moment. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate your perspective. Um, thank you so much for being with us, Morton Klein.
Thank you. It's great to be with you. Thanks for bringing the truth to your audience. It's absolutely our pleasure to be the truth. We always will be. We'll keep being that. So, um, and we'd love to have you back soon. Thank you again. I'd love to. Thank you. Coming up, Ben Burkwam and Amanda Head have fired up the RAV bus and they are back on the road again. They're next. And we also have, um, well, you stick around because my prompter just went wacko. <laughs> and sometimes that happens in television. So I don't know what's next, but you just stay where you are. We're in this together, right? See you soon.